Welcome to TKTV. This is an episode of Mother Show, the show where we like to look at everything Mothership RPG. And this is a package I received in the mail containing a lot of what I was missing for my Mothership collection, which is crazy because I'm the co-owner of Tuesday Night Games. But what I'm looking at right now is something very special, something I'm really proud of, both as a game publisher, but also as a designer. This is Dissident Whispers. Dissident Whispers is an anthology of 58 original two-page RPG adventures made by a diverse international collective of creators, all of which are supporting the Black Lives Matter movement. In fact, all the proceeds, all of them, go directly toward the National Bail Fund Network. This is one of those amazing times where collaborators get together and truly work towards a common goal while creating something really fun and, I know I'm biased here, but beautiful. I mean, look at this. There's adventures for Mothership, Morkborg, Trophy Gold, Troika, Electric Bastion Land, Dungeon Crawl Classics, Ultraviolet Grasslands, The Black Hat, Mouse Ritter, BX, 5th Edition, and there's a lot that are system agnostic in this book. The cover art was done by Jaberry Weathers, and there's an introduction written in here by Laura Simpson. Altogether, there's a team of 90 authors, designers, editors, illustrators, writing from Chris McDowell, who is a friend of the show, but also the creator of Electric Bastion Land. Luke Gearing, who wrote our most recent Mothership module, Gradient Descent. The layout, gorgeous, from Johan Noor from Workborg, and Sean McCoy, our very own Sean McCoy, the designer of Mothership. Art from many artists, David Hoskins, Evelyn Morrow, Doug Kovacs. Great art here. And I think this, what we're looking at, is just a great example of something to own, not just to play, but also to just own as a piece of artwork. Just look at the time, diligence, and creativity that went into so much of this book. Just the different colors, layouts, everything. It gives me this comic book feeling without actually being a comic book. No, it's better because it's a collection of modules. And you'll have to excuse my ignorance here, but I can't think of another piece of artwork like this that is so eclectic, that is such a strong collection of different ideas and artists just working together and behind the scenes in such a short amount of time. Basically, there was this need and people listened and they submitted. And if you're a designer, artist, a contributor out there that didn't get to contribute, don't worry. I'm sure there'll be more opportunities in the future. Ugh. We will be heard. I love it. Dissident whispers. Let's put that aside. And here's the t-shirt. This went along with our Kickstarter. And can I just take the time to note whoever packaged this box? Pro. Aces. You need to teach a master class. Get a raise already. It's amazing how everything is fit together so well, folded, sealed, and taped. Now, this is me struggling with the tag to show you not just the size, but the material. This is next level apparel, and it's tri-blend. Tri-blend, not just cotton, not just polyester. It's got that rayon in there. And if you've never felt the tri-blend difference, you're missing out. Pretty much anyone who picks up a tri-blend shirt can instantly feel the difference between that and any of the other types of blended shirts or non-blended shirts. Forget 100% cotton. That's like wearing a canvas tent. Psh. No, this is as if an angel came down from heaven and shot a cloud right onto your flesh. It feels so good. You're so happy once it hits you. You just want to wear it. Notice that it does have the survival guide art on the cover. So it's just one sided t-shirt. Oh, so soft. And I love that it has that matte digital print feel on the front. This way, you know, as you're wearing it, it's going to wear and tear a little bit, but in that right way, the way that is usually reserved for your favorite band t-shirts and whatnot. So I'm really excited to wear the heck out of my mothership t-shirt so that it starts wearing and tearing and just looking cooler and cooler with age. <laughs> yes. 
And of course you can buy all of our stuff on our Tuesday Night Games web store. Buy all of our stuff, please? You'll love it. Try blend. All right, getting back to the box. Now, this is something really exciting as my camera struggles to focus. These are the Cloud Bank Certified Human Patches. These patches have everything to do with the Mega Dungeon module, Gradient Descent. The module has to do with basically a planet that is full of androids. Androids that look so human, they believe they're human. So when you go to this planet of androids, you want to make sure that you remember you yourself are a human. So what you do is when you go diving into this planet, you want one of these patches on your jacket. Now here's a little plot spoiler. This is like my small contribution to Gradient Descent. I wanted there to be a room in this mega dungeon Gradient Descent where you saw that those patches were being manufactured, which is such a mind blow because you're wearing a patch that says certified human, but if they're being made in the Android planet, well, all meaning goes out the window. It doesn't matter what patches you're wearing. And my players flipped when I got them a patch that they were able to wear on their jacket. So for Christmas for my players, I bought them all bombers jackets and put on patches for them. And so they're always excited about what's the next mothership patch. Holy crap. It is hard to pack these things away like they arrived. If there's an Oscar type award for packing materials, it goes to whoever works at Exalted Funeral who sent this to me because it's impressive. It makes me think that they have experience with people complaining about bent corners. They want it in mint condition. Again, the most amazingly meticulous of comic book collectors could not complain about this packing. And here you can see I just pulled out sandwiched in between cardboard within a comic book protector some modules and I keep calling them modules. Realistically, I like to call them toolkits because it not only has adventures in there and not only has scenarios and setting, but there are tools to help you build your own modules. Now what I'm working on opening is the stickers, the official mothership stickers. I like stickers. I like stickers ever since I was a kid, but the reason I really like stickers is it immerses me into the branding of whatever I'm into. If there's something that I love and they have a sticker, ooh, I love to slap that on something that I want to personalize. For instance, here is my Mothership notebook. Everything in there are my maps and notes for the Mothership adventures that I write. So I just take this moleskin knockoff Amazon basic notebook, which by the way, way cheaper than moleskin, yet I think better. You pull out this sticker, slap it onto the notebook, and you got yourself your official mothership notebook. Well, not official, but the official sticker on your unofficial mothership notebook. But note to manufacturer, this is more of a note to us publishing. The stickers I love are the ones that are smart enough to put a slit in the back of the protectors. Because if you don't have that slit, oh my goodness, it is so difficult to peel away a sticker. <laughs> but boom goes the dynamite. Finally got it from its back, placing it onto my notebook. And now I can view my notebook with pride, knowing that anything Mothership goes in there. Don't put any of your D&D &D stuff in there. No, no. This is for Mothership content. Oh God, I love the smell. The paper. I just want to write. But what else do we have in this box? Let's move these stickers aside and pull out the Trifold Mini Adventures. This is brilliant. I hadn't seen this anywhere else. This is our first one, The Haunting of Ypsilon 14. And even though it's just a brochure, it has an adventure. And the way it's laid out, brilliant. You start there, and each of these descriptions is a room. And it reminds me of those Parsec games where it highlights key people, NPCs, monsters, items of interest that you can pick up. So imagine the Adventures of Zork where you would go in and you would just get text space. But here, it has that layout, but you as the warden, the dungeon master, if you will, can pick up these tri-fold brochures 
and almost improv and adventure with very little preparation because everything's already there. I love this. This is great bathroom material, as I call it, because you get all of this great material in just one shitting's worth of preparation. It almost brings new meaning to the term one shot. Maybe we should call it one shit. I don't know. I probably shouldn't swear so much. Sorry. Sorry, mom. What am I kidding? My mom swears more than me. Sorry, whoever cares. This one's cute. This is the hacker's handbook. I love that it went through the effort to make typeface art. For instance, the title, Hacker's Handbook. Look at that art. But if you're a fan of Ready Player One, here's another one shot, Hideo's World. And Hideo's World is the idea of going into that virtual reality space and having a sci-fi horror adventure mothership style. And again, this oozes with style. This reeks of early 90s internet. For instance, Comic Sans, that's a huge horrific sin, but here it fits because it's really playing into that 90s internet verse. This may be the closest thing we have to a mothership joke. Comic Sans, Ready Player One. But now we're down to the last item in the box. Here we go. Gradient Descent. Look at this. Luke Gehring, Tefani. Oh man, look at these authors and contributors. We got Crater. And of course, we have McCoy. This is a mega dungeon. I talked about it before. But here's something about this that I'm amazed other adventurers don't do especially mega dungeons. If you look at the inside cover, it's very useful. And this is a map of the mega dungeon. But if you look closely, it looks nonsensical. 5e, 32b, but there is a key and warden notes that tell you what each of these mean. What's the difference between a dashed line versus a solid line versus a empty room, empty block? But the brilliance is it's labeled that way to correspond to the pages of the book. So if you wanted to know where 35D was, you turn to page 35. Turn to page 35. Here you go. You've got a zoomed in reference of exactly what's going on. And just to help you recapture that memory, a lot of times it does repeat the map. So you don't have to keep flipping back and forward. It really has a user experience in mind throughout this mega dungeon let alone all of the story mechanics. And I love Gradient Descent as a mega dungeon because it reminds me of an adventure that you can't do in a one-shot. It's like the opposite of what we just looked at with the threefold, the trifold brochures. Because in Gradient Descent, you go to this android planet and then get out. And it almost has this press your luck feature to it, combining RPG with press your luck. How deep do you go? Because you don't want to be in there too long because you start getting the bends. And what are the bends? That's what we talked about before. So when you start thinking that you're an android, so it has this added mechanic of slowly but surely starting to doubt your own humanity because you're surrounded in this labyrinth of androids. And again, the artwork is gorgeous, very thematic. Some of this reminds me of scary stories that tell in the dark. And it really immerses me with going down into this huge, never ending place full of androids. And it just gives me the heat. Look at this page, especially. Look at this. Tell me that doesn't remind you of scary stories that tell in the dark. But oh my, there's stories and layers to this as well. But again, I can't emphasize this enough. The primary goal here wasn't beauty. It was function. And somehow the layout has found that beautiful Venn diagram overlap of function and beauty. It really stands on its own. And I know I'm gushing over our own product here, but I can't really think of another module, another campaign setting, another mega dungeon that really does it as intuitively as Gradient Descent. And this is our heftiest piece that we've released so far. Besides, besides Dissident Whispers, this is all Mothership. So talking specifically Mothership, this has very condensed, thick material. It is our biggest zine. 
that we have available for purchase. You get a lot. So if you think that you might enjoy a long mega dungeon or just a crazy place for your players to visit, this is for you. Again, here's the function. On the back, here's a reference chart. Inside cover, reference chart. How does function meet beauty and immersion? Gradient descent. I can't wait to keep on playing this. And this can be treated as a one shot. That's a beautiful thing. You can go in, one adventure, get out and decide I'm never going back there. That was terrifying. Or do you keep on going back, risking the bends more and more and learning more of the mythos? And then finally, here's my attempt to put everything back the way I found it, just to reverse that unboxing experience in hopes that you'll like this video, subscribe if you liked what you saw. If you want more Mothership content, let us know. In fact, do you own any of these? If so, which of you run and which are your favorite? I would love to read those in the comment section. And more importantly, if you haven't, which of these do you think you're jonesing for the most? Because I get plenty of people that actually have told me that the Haunting of Ypsilon 14 was their favorite adventure. And that's crazy to me because it's a trifold one-shot adventure. It's the smallest thing. So the amount of bang you can get for your buck with just a single trifold, that's insane. Thanks again for watching. Take the time to like, subscribe, do all that YouTube stuff, and we'll do our best to bring you more content on TKTV, but also more content for your role-playing mothership needs and more. Check out our stuff. I'm out of here.